G'day folks. Well, for tonight's little autopsy, we have a Minolta FN105 finishing unit. This is off my uh, Dialta DI450 uh, digital ma um, monochrome copier. This finisher does pretty much everything. It stacks sorts, staples in multiple, multiple positions and does full hole punching for two ring and four ring binding. So it's basically got the lot. You've got a hole puncher right in there. We've got the staple cartridges and uh, main units, stapling units. Uh, these ones actually use, uh, well, I'm pretty sure most photocopies, pretty much every copier I've seen uses straight wire staple and it forms it over an anvil as it comes down. You can see in there's a little anvil there. So it's not like a staple gun or a regular hand stapler where the staples are already pre-formed this does it all automatically so they're a pretty cool little unit and should be able to fire them off without uh, without having to run the uh, PLC in this or the controls or anything like that I should just be able to rip this loom out and apply power to the right motor and solenoid and it should fire off so we'll look at that in a separate part but for now I just want to strip this down and get it out of here it's taking up way too much room but yeah, this is a proper digital copier finisher. That's your uh, output stacking bin. That there I think is an auxiliary output tray. I don't think I've ever used that. Well, bypass tray. That's for uh, sorted and stapled sets. Um, yeah, they're pretty good. Pretty good machine. It's done a lot and a lot of work. So we'll put it out of its misery in style. We'll do a proper autopsy on it or at least a partial one anyway. I mean, I don't have an awful lot of time, but we'll delve into there and see what goodies are inside it and just get this thing out of the way. All the plastics have to be cut up and thrown in the rubbish bin anyway. I don't like taking stuff like this to the scrapyard because they don't like me when I do that. Taking whole photocopies in isn't good because it's all mostly plastics. So I might as well strip it down to bare metal and uh, see what other goodies I can get out of it. The plastic's done. <laughs> well, there's a fair bit in there. Lots of stepping motor drivers. And they're not, not a bad unit. They look fairly simple, but there's a lot of bits in them. And they're not cheap. With a box of holes. Betty pieces. <laughs> well, that's about all the metal bits. I guess we better look at a bit more detail. We'll have a look at some of the components that are inside it. Okay, now that we're down to bare chassis, you can see paper from the copier comes in through here. These little sleeved pins are the hole punch 
That's the first thing that happens. Paper feeds up to a point, gets punched, and then goes through to the uh, other finishing side of it. Uh, it'll get stacked together and stapled if necessary, but generally if it's just hole punched, it'll get assembled in a binder anyway, so stapling's not necessary. But you can staple and punch at the same time, I believe. Uh, that's the drive for the stapler. It goes through a little gear reduction in here. It's not the most solid of things, but remember it only punches one sheet at a time. It's not designed to uh, feed back a ream of sheets and punch them all at once. It's just one sheet at a time. Punch, punch, punch. And this machine runs 45 pages a minute, so it's pretty quick. But that's the DC motor for that. That operates the bypass feed by the looks of it. Um, well the non-sort bin I suppose you, sh you should call it. The top bin is the non-sorted. The lower tray which raises and lowers down this track carries the finished packs like whether it's stapled or hole punched it'll come out and get assembled on there and this thing just drops a little bit at a time as it loads up and uh, you end up with a tray load of uh, stapled and finished assembled copies like booklets or whatever you're making. Uh, as far as these controls go, that's for, that's part of the main feed mechanism, but it feeds this. Same with that motor there, that's probably your main output feed. That one there is input traction, that just drives the paper in to the, shri the um, puncher. That one there, yeah, that drives your main non-sort output. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. There's another DC motor in there, but that's probably for the elevator. I didn't know any better, I'd say, oh. or is it for main feed through? There's also something which drives the stapler mechanism as well, but I think that's mounted on it. Yeah, it's probably mounted up there. There's another little motor. Yeah, I can't really remember with these things. I never really worked on them much. They generally don't fail. That's the best thing about it. They don't fail that often that you need to pull them apart. Even though it's a Chinese-made Minolta product, they're really tough. The Minolta FN 105, 106, it's a firmware version or something, V715010, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I'd better break this down a little bit more. I'm going to, we'll do a close up of the main board. Uh, the stepping motors are of no practical use to me, so they can stay on there. They're only tiny little things anyway, so I don't know. I might pull them off and someone can have them, but I've got enough stuff to ship out at the moment. Can't keep doing that. But that is... Where does that go? I think... No, that's the elevator. That's main main motor for the elevator. That raises and lowers the uh, sorted output tray. Yeah, it feed, the belt goes up into there, all the way down, all the way up and back through. So it's just a very long uh, timing belt. It's a nice plastic gears. And stuff I have practically no use for, so unfortunately most of this stuff's going to stay in one piece and go to the junkyard. But I will pull the uh, stapler mechanism out and just show you that one. The hole punch is nothing special, it's just a series of pins and dies, and it just punches holes, so there's nothing to see there. Some solenoids and things. It's all 24 volt DC. Uh, yeah, there's another drive in there too. There's loads and loads of motor drives, heaps of stuff. If you're into that sort of thing, like robotics, little motors and stepping motors and that sort of thing, go visit your local photocopier shop, digital copier shop. You'll most of the time they've got piles of machines to get rid of. As I said before, just walking into my local Minolta dealer. They basically gave me a 40 foot container's worth of machines. They just said, here, get a truck and get rid of them. We want to get rid of them, but we have to pay someone to come and get them. So instead, I got rid of them for free. I just paid $250 for a bloody uh, removalist truck, and we filled it completely. It was heavy too. The driver didn't. The driver had a bit of fun driving that one. Like, these machines are not light. So, yeah, <laughs> that would have been a bit of fun for the driver trying to drive it. 25 30 kilometers to my place but yeah we managed to fill my entire carport my entire driveway everything with photocopiers one day 
And we did that twice over a period of two years. That was fun. But once you've seen so many copiers, you sort of just want to get rid of them after a while. I think that's why I don't work on them very often. I've burnt myself out. There's some good steel rods there too. It's another bonus. You get bushings, rods, bearings, timing belts, loads of timing belts and gears. It's just crazy. There's awesome stuff in these. Okay, well that was easy. <laughs> Gotta love cordless screwdrivers. I got most of the goody bits out of there. There's loads more little motors and things, but they're all 24 volt. And they're just really not that useful. Little brush motors. I know someone's going to say I should pop them with a microwave transformer or something, but to be honest, they're about as boring as popping a PC speaker. There's really not much to it. It just dies and a little, little bit of smoke comes out. The bigger ones, maybe. But they're kind of practical in a way. They've got enough grunt to be useful for something. Uh, yeah. I could go through and pull all these plastic gears and things out, but there isn't an awful lot of use for them. I might. We'll see what I get time for. I'll chuck it back outside, and if I get time, I'll go through and pull, pillage some of the gears. There's a magnetic clutch to drive the uh, hole punch, uh, a few other different things. Anyway, that's the end of that one. Uh, we'll do a close-up of this, and then we'll look at this separately, I think. That's going to be a rainy day project. But that's just the uh, stapler. So I've got all that. Stepping motors. A few plastic gears. The timing belts and other stuff. That moved the uh, back of the tray side to side so it would stagger the stacks of copies. So you wouldn't have to flick through and try and find the first page of each one to separate them. It's not a bad little setup. Just a big worm gear. Um, yeah, that's about it. Damn noisy birds outside. <laughs> they're not, at least they're not angry birds. Anyway, let's have a close look at this and that'll be it. Okay, so that's the main board. A few different NECICs on it. Reset switch and dip switch. I'm guessing that's all stepping motor control. Yeah. Yeah, it'll all be for uh, controlling the stepping motors. Various power control caps and sort of thing. Decent quality caps. The 470-50s. Little NEC processor. Yeah, there's not an awful lot else on this. A few SMDs on the underside, transistors and diodes and things. A lot of resistors. Still a nice board, I'll give them that much. A ROM chip. <laughs> we'll find something fun to do with that, I've got an idea. It might involve something you shouldn't normally flash a ROM chip with, but we'll flash this ROM chip one day. <laughs> be best if the socket's hollow underneath. It looks like it is. Perfect. I think we could flash this ROM chip real good. Anywho. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.